On Monday, 22 years later, communities across the nation remember the 9-11 attacks. Emily Haugen shares how a ceremony honored first responders in Brooklyn Park. Oh, say can you see? It takes courage to step up. By the dawn's early light. That's something those on the front lines do every day. I wouldn't be here were it not for those who gave that sacrifice that day, who, who continued to persevere. September 11, 2001 changed a nation. Lieutenant Patrick Kelmo says he'll never forget. For the coming days to watch it again and again, it was, it was just really, really difficult. It changed first responders. This was a major wake up call and a call to duty. Life saving work is vital, but it's a challenge. It takes its toll emotionally, physically. It takes its toll on the, the support networks and the families that those people rely on. Thank you for joining us for our annual 9-11 golf tournament. The Frontline Foundation works to ease that burden. If a first responder should lose their life in the line of duty, the Frontline Foundation gives the remaining survivors of that family $20,000. In Brooklyn Park, 22 years later, first responders and golfers remember. Police, firefighters, and others ran toward the burning buildings to save as many as they could that day. Many of them never returned and they pledge to never forget. And the home of the In Brooklyn Park, rain. Emily Haugen, CCX News. Those out at Edinburgh Golf Course Monday afternoon also took part in the Remembering 9-11 Golf Tournament. Proceeds went to the Frontline Foundation. That money helps families of first responders and also helps buy tactical equipment for police and fire departments. Police in Brooklyn Park say an impaired driver caused a crash that involved the school bus on Monday. Officers responded around 10 a.m. to a crash near 97th and Penn Avenues. A car had struck a school bus, but there were no kids on board. Police say the driver of the car left the scene before officers were able to make an arrest a short distance away. The driver faces possible charges for operating a vehicle while impaired and leaving the scene of an accident. A Maple Grove woman and her daughter are remembered as passionate and caring. 54-year-old Melanie Jansen of Maple Grove and her 29-year-old daughter, Hannah Parmenter, were shot and killed at a resort home last week up north in Breezy Point. Police say they were fatally shot by 59-year-old Michael Toner of Maple Grove before he took his own life. A GoFundMe has been set up to help the victim's loved ones left behind. After just a year on the job, Brooklyn Center's police chief will retire. Kellis McDaniel started as chief in June 2022. Prior to that, he had been a lieutenant with the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office. Chief McDaniel took over in a tumultuous time. Previous police chief Tim Gannon had resigned after the fatal officer-involved shooting of Dante Wright in April 2021. Many officers then left the department. According to the city, Chief McDaniel oversaw the hiring of 13 new officers. McDaniel's last day with the city will be January 31st. Families in Golden Valley now have some new amenities to enjoy at two of the city's busiest parks. As Delane Cleveland explains, it's all thanks to the work of a local nonprofit with a focus on kindness. There's two pods per park and all of the elements are different. Kindness can take on many forms. And at Golden Valley's Brookview Park, they have it all sequenced up. Sweat equity mixed in with some construction expertise are the cornerstones of this community service project, which involves building and installing new playground equipment. It's just a wonderful, natural addition um, and a great use of space. Michelle Christensen is the founder of One Good Deed, a Golden Valley-based nonprofit consisting of hundreds of volunteers. Yeah. Volunteers like Sam Dahlquist of Crystal. Just gives you pride in your community and you know it's definitely gonna be a place I bring my son and kind of feel cool that I helped put it together. Whether it's spreading mulch or tightening bolts, they do this simply because they want to perform acts of kindness for others. We have one good deed that we do a month. This is September's good deed. 
Some good deeds are large, some are small. This would count as one of the larger good deeds. Christensen partnered with the city of Golden Valley and Design Tree Engineering to build four play pods at Brookview as well as nearby Lions Park. All told, it's a $75,000 gift to Golden Valley, paid for entirely through grants and donations. It's a wonderful, beautiful thing, and I think the longevity of our group and the expansion of it really does show how much kindness there is in the world. And this particular act of kindness is something that families will be able to enjoy for decades to come. It, it feels good. It doesn't feel like work. In Golden Valley, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. The volunteers finished that installation in four hours. For photos on the completed amenities, you can go to our website at ccxmedia.org. Finally today, a special tribute to a proud Osseo marching band alum. Rob Margolis was a 2008 Osseo graduate who devoted his life to music and education. He recently passed away at the age of 33. On Saturday, the Osseo marching band paid tribute to Rob at the Lion's Roar Parade. We leave you with their performance. After a loss to a good Lakeville South team in their opener, the Wyzetta football team faced arch-rival Minnetonka in Week 2 for the Trojans' home opener. A great night for football and a packed house at Wyzetta for this one. First quarter and Trojans quarterback Cole Heilbrunn pushes in from a yard out for a touchdown. Wyzetta leads 7-0, one of two rushing scores for the senior in the game. Final play of the first quarter and Tonka quarterback Milos Pozocevic fakes the handoff and runs it in from two yards out and it's 7-7. Seven seven. That's the score at halftime too. Third quarter, Halbrun throws a strike to Tony Lay. He goes untouched down the sideline for a 36-yard touchdown and Wyzetta's back in front 14-7. Later in the third and down two scores, Minnetonka gets one back. Spazocevic throws to Roman Johnson. He breaks tackles and scores from 20 yards out. It's a 21-14 game after three. Midway through the fourth quarter, and Spazocevic to Johnson again. It's a five-yard touchdown pass this time. The skippers then went for and converted on a two-point try after to go ahead 22-21. And they hold off Wysetta. The Trojans fall to 0-2 on the season with a 22-21 loss to Minnetonka. The Park Center football team played its home opener Friday night as the Pirates looked to bounce back from a week one road loss to Cooper. First game for the Pirates on their new turf, hosting from, uh, Bloomington Kennedy. The Eagles beat PC 7-6 a year ago. This game would be nothing like that one. First quarter, Park Center running back Josh Diggs gets to the edge and into the end zone on an eight-yard scoring run, and it's 7 to nothing. Next drive for Park Center, and a huge hole for DeAnthony Miller to run through. He goes 14 yards for a touchdown, one of two for him in the game, and the Pirates lead 14 nothing. The Eagles backed up deep in their own end on their next drive. Park Center's Emmanuel Dorbor comes with pressure up the middle and forces what would have been a forward pass into a lateral. Almost a defensive touchdown for the Pirates, but it's ruled a safety, and it's 16 to nothing. Next offensive series for Park Center, Isaac Davis. Swings a pass out to Diggs, and the junior turns on the speed and gets down the sideline all the way for a 68-yard touchdown. 23 points for Park Center in three minutes, and they lead 23-0 after one. Second quarter, and Chris Roberts of Park Center rushing from the left side gets a piece of the football on the Kennedy punt. Randy Quete picks it up and runs it in from 12 yards off for a special teams touchdown, and it's 37-0. Final play of the first half, Davis scrambling, and just before he goes down, he passes to Diggs, who finds the end zone. It's 44-6 at halftime. Diggs with four touchdowns total of the night. Park Center goes on to route Kennedy, 64-6 the final.
In Class 3A football, both Brooklyn Center and Concordia Academy were looking for their first wins of the season. Chaz Moots has the highlights. The Centaurs were shut out in their home opener against Foley in Week 1. The Beacons lost at home to Dassel Kakato. Under a minute left in the first quarter, Concordia up 3-0. They extend that lead when Kellen Quass completes a three-yard touchdown pass to Jariah Wilmeth. The Beacons went into the locker room up 15-0 at the half. But on Brooklyn Center's first drive of the second half, Deshaun Pongsack looks left, sets, tosses right to Sean Johnson who not only makes the catch but breaks the tackle and races 62 yards for the Centaurs' first score of the game. That cuts the lead down to 15-7. to Later in the third quarter, BC knocking on the door again. This time it's Pongsack taking it himself on the quarterback keeper. He lunges in and scores to bring the Centaurs within two points of a tie ball game. BC decides to go for two. Pongsack, quick little bubble screen to Gabriel Morales, makes one man miss and runs in for the two point conversion. All knotted up at 15. But the Beacons would answer back fourth quarter. It's Quace taking the direct snap, goes right, and weaves his way in and out of defenders for a 16 yard score. Concordia would go on to defeat the Centaurs on the road 30 to 23. In Brooklyn Center, Chas Moots. CCX Sports.